a file discovered at the country club home of the former president, that would be President Trump, had information about the nuclear capabilities of a foreign government. That according to the Washington Post. Senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge is in Washington for us with more. Uh, Catherine, it's an uncomfortable new detail. Good morning. Well, good morning, Tony. National security and nuclear experts told CBS News if the intelligence was compromised, it has the potential to damage collection methods, even burn sources. Ah. The analysts who do not have firsthand knowledge of the Mar-a-Lago record said intelligence describing a foreign government's military defenses, including its nuclear capabilities, can reveal fragile collection methods such as human sources, electronic surveillance and spy satellite technology. In the intelligence world, this highly classified information is called compartmented intelligence because the distribution is limited access, highly restricted, and on a need-to-know basis, such as the president, a limited number of cabinet secretaries, and those directly running an operation. The experts said it will be important to know if the military defense intelligence is about an adversary or a friendly nation, because gathering on our partners is done, but considered extremely sensitive. Oh, oh my God. I just, uh, you know, uh, this, this man-child here in Florida, this, this, this baby, this self-serving little imbecile baby has in his or had in his possession and lied about having in his possession for a year and a half, even after a subpoena to produce these documents, he had them in a country club off of Ocean Avenue in Palm Beach, where people who were suspected of spying for various countries around the globe, go in and out of all the time. And what he had was the most tippy top top need to know, no foreign eyes, uh, you know, information about everything America does in order to get nuclear weapons information on other countries. And again, we don't know which country he had nuclear information about. We don't know, is this a friendly country? Is it, uh, you know, should the UK worry? Should France worry? Or was it an adversarial nation? Is it Kim Jong-un's stuff? Is it China's stuff? Is it Pakistan's stuff? Is it Russia's stuff? We have no earthly idea whose stuff he had. But one thing that you can be sure of, this actually included, because it was marked this way, human intelligence sources and methods. And, you know, throughout the years, we've always talked about, you know, the most uh, uh, closely held secrets are always sources and methods. And why have we talked about that? We've talked about that because there have been other legal issues in play in our lifetimes as, uh, you know, citizens of this here country. And we always said, oh, well, you know, you can't, uh, you can't just, uh, you know, talk to these people in open session. You can't ask them these questions in open session because it would damage sources and methods. And that's the only reason why we know this phrase, right? Because we're never allowed to hear the closed door testimony of intelligence officials uh, even when we were impeaching Donald Trump on the Ukrainian uh, issue, right, we weren't allowed to ask Marie Yovanovitch. We weren't allowed to ask Alexander Vindman certain questions in open session. Well, Donald Trump had in his possession that kind of information in an insecure location that was very valuable. And we don't know who, which country is now scrambling to protect their secrets. But what we do know is our sources and methods for collection of that material is now either in jeopardy or has been sold or has been passed on to people who shouldn't have it or simply idiot boy like to uh, brag that he had it or he's telling Kim Jong-un, you know, hey, dude, you wouldn't believe what they're saying about you in this here report. Do you know what I'm saying? But how we spy on other nations who will now not trust us with their secrets. That's the result if it's an allied nation. They will never trust the United States of America because the United States of America elected themselves an idiot imbecile with absolutely no integrity, no character, no principles that can't be trusted with Americans' security and secrets. 
So now if it's an allied nation and it gets out that it was France or it was uh, the UK or something like that, they will never work with us again. We will never be trusted again because it could happen again. Okay, you understand? Now, if it's a if it's a hostile nation and we were actually turning people into double agents or into operatives for us, which is, uh, I mean, the, the whole issue of spying is a very high risk business. These people literally risk their lives either for their own government or for ours. And you're talking about now uh, uh, exposing them, exposing operatives, uh, exposing, uh, you know, uh, uh, spies, exposing double agents, exposing like every single tool that we have in the human intel box. Never mind that it exposes every single technical aspect of how we collect information, the signals intelligence, which is communications, right? So we don't know if there were, there, there's information in there about how we encrypt communications between us and uh, people in the field, let's say, or our, uh, you know, people were interested in the satellites, right? And I said, well, hell, my car can find a satellite, you know, so, but what about the encryption? What about the satellite technology that we use to spy? What about that? Okay. What about the code breaking? People have to learn how to be code breakers. I know this because, you know, when I was in the Air Force, I didn't do any of this, but the the guy that, that talked me into joining the Air Force, you know, it was, uh, you know, back in the day, I had a boyfriend. He was a, a code breaker is what he did. He flew on an AWACS plane and he, he had the really sexy job. He had the cool job. He had the travel everywhere job. I got the job as the mechanic in New Jersey. Didn't work out for me. But he had that job where they're sitting there and they're, they're, they're intercepting and breaking the code that countries use to speak to each other when they're talking about clandestine activities or when they're talking about nuclear weapons or when they're talking about locating uh, American forces. And that is why, that is why everybody is so freaked out by this. That is why. Because a, an entire array of sources, methods, people, human intelligence, t uh, techniques, satellites, encryption, uh, I, all of it is sitting in, in, in this man, I mean, it's terrifying. Terrifying to think that Donald Trump was president of the United States, yes, but that he has all these sensitive secrets now that he's a private citizen and that we have a judge in Fort Pierce, Florida. This is where she is. In Fort Pierce, Florida, with apparently, I've been listening to lots and lots of federal attorneys on this, saying that a woman on the federal judiciary in Fort Pierce, Florida, doesn't have jurisdiction over executive privilege issues. She should never have even heard this case. And then the other issue about her, she was a Trump appointee in the last batch of judges that Trump actually got through to the Senate. She was appointed after January 6th. She was appointed in that little interim moment there after the United States was attacked, and she was still put on the court. She's a member of the Federalist Society, where she'll probably get a standing ovation for going outside her realm of jurisdiction to say that the President of the United States and the secrets that he held there can't be looked at anymore by the executive branch. Executive privilege against the executive branch of the Department of Justice. And there are federal lawyers who are saying, you know, she's not even supposed to hear matters of executive privilege. That rests with the D.C. Circuit Court. That's not hers to deal with. That's not even anything she's allowed to decide on. And yet she did. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.